What I'm going to cover in this video is an analytical aspect of chemistry called mass spectrometry. Now, mass spectrometry has a couple of uses. It can be used for elements and compounds. So I've split the topic into two. So this video is only about elements. So in the box here, I've got a very, very simplistic representation of an element. And we know that elements are composed of isotopes. So they are atoms of the same element. So they've got the same number of protons, but they have different numbers of neutrons. And that makes their masses slightly different. So a typical element would contain more than one isotope. I've got two isotopes in this box here. I've got the green one and the red one. So mass spectrometry can tell us a couple of things about this element. It can tell us the isotopic composition of the element. So in other words, it can tell us how much of these isotopes are green, the green one, and how much are the red one. And they can also tell us the relative atomic mass. So the relative atomic mass, if you remember from unit one, is the combined mass of the isotopes. So that's taken into account the, the, the weighted mean. So you can see there, there are more green isotopes than red. And so the relative atomic mass for this particular element would be slightly closer to the green mass than the red mass. So mass spectrometry can tell us a couple of things for elements. So I'm going to start off with a very, very basic explanation of what actually happens inside the mass spectrometer. I'm leaving a lot of the detail out because for the OCR syllabus you don't need to know how the mass spectrometer works. But hopefully this will help a couple of things that we have to look at later on. So I've chosen the green isotope from my box of isotopes in the previous um, whiteboard and the first thing to point out is that it is bombarded with electrons from what's called an electron gun. So electrons are fired at the sample and what happens is or the purpose of that is to knock out one electron from the isotope and if one electron is knocked out of this it will obviously become positively charged, so it would have a 1 plus charge, and that effectively is the electron that's been ejected from the atom. Now, the 1 plus ion is what's measured by the mass spectrometer. It needs the positive charge so that it can be accelerated, but that's not part of OCR syllabus, so I'm going to leave that there. So if this form of the isotope is what's detected by the spectrometer, what it measures is what's called the mass to charge ratio. So the spectrometer is measuring the mass of this particle and it's dividing it by the charge. Now because the mass of this ion is virtually identical to the mass of the original atom, because the only difference is an electron and they have a negligible mass. When we divide the mass by the mass of this, which is effectively the same as the mass of that, when we divide that by the charge, which is one plus, we just get the original number because we're just dividing by one. And so the, the mass of this ion is effectively the mass of the isotope that we started with. So I'm just going to give the these particles an, uh, just a random mass now. So let's imagine that the relative isotopic mass, so it's the mass of this isotope, has a mass of 20. If we knock out the electron, then we can say that the mass to charge ratio and that's, you'll notice there, denoted as M over Z. So I've added that there as well. The mass to charge ratio of this particle here 
is also 20. So essentially, the mass of both of these are the same. So what would that look like on the mass spectrum for this made up element? Well, we would see um, a peak at mass to charge ratio of 20. So that would be due to this particle. So it would be the green isotope and do not forget about the positive charge. We'll consider the red isotope now. So I've just, again, this is all made up for the purpose of the video. We've got the red atom and I've given that a relative isotopic mass of 18. And so when the electron's knocked out and the particle is measured by the mass spectrometer, it will measure a mass to charge ratio for this particle also at 18. And so we would expect to see another peak. Let's go for 18 there. So I want you to think about how would the height of this peak compare with the height of the 20 peak? And then we'll look at what the label is for the y-axis. I've added a clue there. I've labelled the y-axis now, and the y-axis represents the relative abundance. Sometimes it's expressed as a percentage, other times it's expressed as a, a raw number. So again, have a think about how that would be translated into the spectrum. So if we count up now the number of green isotopes present in this sample, you can see we have eight. So the height of this peak here corresponds to eight isotopes. Now if we count up the red atoms, you can see there are only four, and the spectrum would show us that by drawing the peak half the height of the 21. So I've added that information to the spectrum now. So the black numbers above the peak represent the actual number of particles. So we've got eight versus four. I've also converted those to percentages, so out of the 12 particles, 8 are the green ones, so that's 67%, and out of the, the, all the particles, the red would correspond to 33% of the sample. So what we're going to do now is we're going to use that information to work out the relative atomic mass of this sample. So that information there is the first bullet point that I mentioned at the start of the video. Remember there was two things mass spectrometry can tell us about elements. What we've got there now is the isotopic composition. So this sample of this element contains um, two thirds of isotope with a mass of 20 and one third the isotope with a mass of 18. So I've fed that data into these two equations here. So the black one represents using the raw data, so the 4 and the 8. So that's the actual number of particles. And the blue version uses the percentages. Now you can see that both methods give you, of course, the same answer. So just a reminder, we learned this uh, method at the very start of the AS course when we looked at relative atomic mass. So just a reminder, how do you work out relative atomic mass? You multiply the, the mass of the isotope by its abundance, so how much there is. So there's four 18s, and then we add that to the abundance and the mass of the next isotope. And we divide that, if we're using raw data, we divide that by the, the total number of particles. So there are 12 particles altogether. Four of them have a mass of 18. Eight of them has a, have a mass of 20. And so the weighted mean, that's the relative atomic mass, has a value of 19.3.
Using the percentage data, we use the percentages instead of the raw numbers. And again, so it's percentage times the mass of the isotope plus percentage times mass of the isotope. Over 100 now because we're working in percentages, not raw numbers. And of course, we still get the same answer. If you had a third isotope present, then obviously you would just extend the equation to take into account the next isotope and so on. So I'm just going to do one actual example and then we're going to move on in the next video to look at the, the mass spectra of organic molecules. So neon mass spectrum would look something like this. So we've got three peaks. Straight away that's telling us there are three isotopes of neon. So we have neon 20, neon 21 and neon 22. But obviously in a sample of neon we'd have all three isotopes present. The height of the peaks tells us that obviously neon 20 is the most common, the most abundant. So that has a relative abundance of 114. The isotope 21 very, very little amount of this, 0.2, and isotope 22, a bit more, but still nowhere near as much as that. So that's 11.2. So before we go into the calculation, you should hopefully be able to see that the answer is going to be closest to the 114 peak, because when we do the weight of mean, that's obviously going to pull the mean across. So I've fed the data into the equation, the formula. So it's the abundance times the mass. So 114 times 20, abundance times mass, added to that one, plus the other abundance times mass. And we've divided by the total abundance. We're not working in percentages in this example. So we actually add the raw numbers together and we get 125.4. And when you plug those numbers into your calculator to one decimal place, we get an answer of 20.2.